Hi, amazing viewers. Welcome to Christianity over Islam with Shanshimon. And on today's debate, Muslim attacks Jesus and immediately backfires. Let's watch this amazing debate. From what I heard is that you were, again, saying that Jesus is Allah. My issue is that when, when you think of the all, Almighty Creator, you don't think of, of, uh, of, of an entity that sleeps or uses the bathroom or, or has a wife and has a child in the sense that we, you and I have. Okay. So that's why you cannot say Jesus is the son. That's why you see in the Quran that Jesus is referred to Isa ibn Maryam. Mm -hmm. So we know that it's a miracle that, that Allah gave uh, Maryam, you know, a, a child, yeah. which was Isa, Messiah. Yeah. But we don't say he's the son of Allah because Allah why? can't have a son. Why? Why can't he? He can't because, because of what I just explained. You can't what did you give explain? Him any human attributes. That you only explained he can't have a human son because he's not a human being. But what makes you think that only humans can have sons? <clears throat> Why can't Allah have a son that's divine without Allah having to have sex with a woman? This is this idea is completely rejected. We Where? don't want to associate we where don't want to associate any kind of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, but where is it rejected? That Allah can have a son who's not human, who is divine, one with him. <clears throat> without Allah having to have sex with someone. There is a verse in the Quran which refers to how can Allah have a son when he does not have any sort of yeah, that's six, you know, humanly partner. In chapter 6, verse 101, it says, Wonderful originator of the heaven and earth. How can he have a son saying he has no consort? Okay, you accept that logic? Allah cannot do stuff. I mean, Allah doesn't do stuff. like You can't even put him on that. So you do accept that logic. So how come Mary can have a son without having sex, but your God can't have a son? Well, these kind of sex? questions that you're asking are kind of outside the realm of of, uh, of what's in our scriptures. But Mary you answered the way Allah answered. This question that you're asking is not something that we can answer based off what we know from our scriptures and our scholars and stuff like that. Okay. So people such as uh, Ibn Kathir or Ibn Abbas, when they when they comment on those uh, ayat, they'll they will say that Allah can't have a son. Okay, and I keep telling these Muslim scholars the present because they're dead in the past. I can't ask them why. Why can't he? Uh, I don't understand it. Just to say he can't doesn't tell me why he cannot. Because if the objection, because you mentioned chapter six, so one. I can ask you something about Christianity, sure. which no scholar has ever said okay. or has ever. So ask I can me. ask you a question. You know, how can Jesus, you know, come up from the dead? How can he do that? I can ask you that because and God you is can life. Tell me what you believe. No, it is. God is life. You don't have any kind of huh? That's not that's not equivalent because that's God is life and he has power over death. Death is something that's in the hands of God. But that actually makes my point. If God has power over death where he can bring life out of death, why then are you saying he doesn't have power to have a son without having sex in order to have a son? So, you see, it says like having a son is sort of, uh, it's a humanly trait. And because no. we don't like to associate our, our creator with having anything, anything humanly. Yeah, to be honest with you, the Quran denies that having a son is simply human, a human trait. The Quran actually acknowledges there are things that are said to be the mother of something or the offspring of something that are not human. For example, in chapter 43, verse 4 of the Quran, it says, this Quran is in Ummul Kitab. Um al-Kitab, the mother of the book, that is with us. And then in chapter 13, verse 39, there it says, Allah can confirm or blot out whatever he so wishes, because with him is Um al-Kitab, the mother of the book. It says that in both those verses. You can read Arabic and confirm. So if you're saying having a son is a human trait, how then can there be the mother of the book with Allah if having children is a human trait? Being a mother is a human trait. Being a father is a human okay, trait. Okay, so, 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 so the mother of the book verse, can you uh, repeat that verse yeah. again? I need to read it. Go to chapter 13, verse 39 first. See, so if you go to Matthew five seventeen, you would see that... Uh, we can talk about Matthew 5. What does that got to do you with... Can, you, the you would be heaven. required to follow the law of the Old Testament. You sure about but that? The thing is... Wait, wait, why are you changing we'll something? Back. Yeah, we'll what happened? Go back to the mother of the thing. We'll go to Matthew 5 because that's not going to help you. Go to... We're going to come to 1339, but I was going to make my point. Okay. You come to a lot of things in Islam like 
which is outside the scope of what our scholars have mentioned. Okay. And the thing is, in Christianity, you don't have really any scholars that mention anything. You guys just really? say what it is that you believe. I'm going to name you some. Over time. All right, well, I'm going to name some too. Some church fathers. The Catholic Church. But yeah, now we can you're go talking back over to, me. Uh, 13, yeah, but before you no go, problem. yeah, before you hold on, calm down, buddy. You're bringing too many issues. I'm going to tell you that's not true because historically we've had theologians and scholars and martyrs who died as martyrs for Jesus. Have you heard of Ignatius? Do you know Ignatius? Uh, no. No. Clement of Rome? No. Polycarp? Heard of John of Damascus. Okay, that, that's the, after your prophet. Polycarp? No, I'm, 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 I don't know that. About so that, this just like you don't like me to represent Islam or your scholars, don't talk about Christianity if you haven't studied we have scholars whose writings are still with us, written in their language that we translate English, like Ibn Kathir wrote in Arabic. We have Irenaeus who wrote in Greek, in English. We have what Ignatius wrote in Greek, translated in English. So let's keep the scholars aside. Let's just go to the Bible and the Quran because I don't think you want to get into a discussion of your scholars, my scholars. Let's stick with something that's right in front of you, the Quran. In chapter 13, verse 39. What does it say? It says, um, it says uh, um al Kitab. So the Um al Kitab, the mother of the book, is with Allah, right? Uh, yeah, that's what it says. Okay, now go to another one. Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4 of the Quran. Chapter 43, verses 3 and 4 of the Quran. Chapter, Chapter 43. 43. And then read 3 and 4. The Quran is in what? It's in something. Tell me what's, what is in. Excuse me. Indeed, we have made it an Arabic Quran that you might understand. Keep reading to four. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, so it's in Arabic. Keep going. And indeed, it is in the mother of the book with us, exalted and full of wisdom. So the Quran it lo it lives where? Where does it live? It's inside what? Yeah, and indeed it is in the mother of the book. With so us, it's in the mother of the book, right? The Quran is so in the mother of the book. What are you what are you driving at? Okay, here? well if you be patient, I'll get there, man. Just be patient, dude. So the the Quran, you read it in Arabic, is in the mother of the book, right? So it comes out of the mother of the book, right? Well in Fi, that's in fee. So it's well, in the fee, but it doesn't say the Quran is. Yes, it is. Just what's the what's before it? This is the Arabic it says, Quran. Okay, what's the in the fee? What is it referring to in verse three, buddy? Come on, man. The Arabic Quran. It is in. All right. So, do you agree with me? There's a mother of the book with Allah, and the Quran comes okay, from yeah. the mother book, the and that Quran comes books. from the book, right? Mother of the book. So this is this is. Uh, <laughs> So Allah revealed the Quran. He made it perfectly clear. So it's with him, but he gave it to us. No, it didn't say with him. No, no. So you mistranslated the verse in my presence. It didn't say it's with him. It says the mother of the book is with him and the Quran is in that mother. It didn't say the Quran is with him. It said the mother of the book is with him and the Quran is in that mother. It came out of that mother of the book. Did you read the verse? Yeah, exactly. Good, good. So here we go. Oh, good. I'm so you said go. exactly, right? Jan, you said exactly. So, so the, the mother, mother the would have been the original Quran. No, we're not talking about. Don't change the subject, dude. Talk so about when, the mother when, of the when, book. When they change the scriptures, the okay. Jews and the Christians. How can the Quran have a mother, Jihad? So you're changing the topic because you're scared. It's okay. I know you're scared. How can the Quran have a mother who's the daddy, Jihad? Don't tell me I'm scared. Okay, then answer the question. Who, if the Quran has a mommy, who's the daddy? Mommy is there. Where's daddy? Look, man, you're really coming to the points now that have no significance. You're telling me who is the mother of the book. Yeah. I, uh, from, from, from first sight, the way I see it, and you didn't even give me an opportunity to, to read the tafsir here. But oh, we got to go to tafsir. This is kind of referring to the Quran sort of being the confirmation of what was tafsir. revealed before. So wait, this you're telling me you're telling me you can't understand the plain Arabic Quran, you have to go tafsir. But so whole point is, in heaven, with Allah, there's the mother of the book. If there's a mother with Allah, it's the mother of the book. Then how can the mother have offspring if it doesn't have a consort? If it's the mommy, there has to be a daddy. Otherwise, there's no mommy without daddy, right? So it's 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 th this is a linguistic issue. Linguistic issue. So in Arabic, when you say Um al Kitab, it, it's not a literal mother. Literal. It's like uh, in, in the Arabic language, they say Um like like if I say this is you know uh, Abu, you know. You know, he's, you know, I say Abu Asmar, like, you Asmar. know, this guy is, he's, he, he's, 
He's really, he's really brown. He's, he's, you know, Abu this. So Abu we don't, this. we don't, you know, we don't like. It's not like a little, <laughs> little. Okay. So you're mother. saying okay, you can so have. So this is a linguistic all issue. Right, linguistic. And I think you know a little all bit. Right, of hold on, hold on, well, let's come back to it. So you would be able to know these linguistic nuances. Okay, well, let's come back to it. You just proved my point. The mother of something, the father of something, or the son of something doesn't have to be physical, sexual. So you just admit my point. So why can't God have a son? without it being sexual and physical. See, that's the point I'm making, and you're seeing the point when it comes to the mother of the book. Well, right. that's now, a different story. All right, well, let's go to Surah Nisa. Can we go to so chapter 4 now? Go because the we're, refer yeah. we're referring to Allah, which right. is a, a different thing. Well, it's a hard thing to say Allah because the mother is with Allah. How is it with Allah if Allah is not the daddy? It belongs to Allah. The mommy belongs to Allah. That means Allah is the daddy. So I just showed you Allah's consort. It's the mother of the book. Because That's Allah's consort. At the end of the day, we don't want to refer. So anything we talk about, you know, like I just described these linguistic nuances, at the end of the day, we don't ascribe anything to Allah. Why don't you understand about that? I didn't ascribe He's anything. So I'm just reading He's your so Quran. exalted that we just leave him in a category okay. by himself. We don't All right, say good. he has a wife. Good, good, good. Okay, I'm going to agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, when you say he's exalted, do you believe he's above the throne or is he on the throne? Is he on the Arsh or is he above the Arsh? Is he on the Kursi or above the Kursi? Is he on it or above it? Well, I don't know what you believe. Okay, so this this is... <laughs> no, because you said he's so which, exalted. Which, which verse are you talking about now? There's which chapter 7 of the Quran, now? verse 54. Chapter 7, verse 54. Chapter 7, verse 54. Yeah, because okay, I have a question so about that. Where Allah is, you said, because he said he's exalted. Is a, it's, a very, it's a metaphorical Okay, thing. well, some think it's actual throne, but I just want to know, do you think he's on it, above it? What does that mean? No, because I heard many scholars say that, you know, like... There's no such like he's not sitting. There's there's no like he's sitting on a like no, that's okay. not the case. To some scholars that you follow that maybe Ashari and Madhavi. No, uh, I think the Salaf. consensus amongst the yeah. mainstream uh, Muslim I can scholars are saying. I can quote to you uh, these, the Salafi, the ones who follow the Salaf of Salih. They say he's above the throne in a manner suiting his Majesty, and we don't try to. When you say the throne, when you say the throne, it's like metaphorical as the earth is like. It's like he's he's above the earth. He's mm -hmm. like above everything in the world. He created it. It doesn't mean that there's like an actual chair that he's sitting in. Okay. As you Christians, All right, like, well, I have uh, a problem. Like CP, like you okay. know, you don't know how many times I've heard CP come yeah. to this. Okay, it's just jihad. ridiculous. Yeah, my friend. If you're telling me it's a metaphor, then in chapter sixty-nine, verse seventeen, it says eight angels. But you carry... just said chapter seven, so I'm hold on, to dude, the verse. Hold on, you just said some. Be patient, dude. Such little patience. You said the throne is a metaphor. In 69, 17 of the Quran, it says eight will carry the throne. Eight will be carrying the throne. Eight angels. What are they carrying if it's a metaphor? 69, verse 17 of the Quran. 69, so are you redirecting me to another verse now? Because you just said, let me repeat, man. Listen to yourself. You said I, the throne. I heard what you just said. So okay. I'm asking you, are you redirecting me? Yeah, to because I want to know, how is it a metaphor? What are the eight angels carrying? A metaphor? 69, 17. Read it. I'll look. So he's carrying a metaphor. The eight angels are carrying a metaphor. They're not actually carrying a throne. Well, we're going to read the tafsir on that one, too. <laughs> okay, it's up to you, dude. If you want to go to tafsir, it's up to you. But just read for me 69, 17. So the Quran itself is not plain. you got to go to tafsir. Okay, 69, 17. But read it for me. Just read what it says. Who? How many carry the metaphorical throne, the throne that's not real? It's a metaphor. How many are carrying it, that metaphor? Let me know when you get there. Read it. Unless you want me to read it. Hold on. It. What? Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it. What the heck was that in the background, dude? Anyway, but go ahead. This is... Uh, uh, All right. Yeah. If you want me to read it, I'll read it for you. You can find Tafsir because it's taking a long time to find it. You yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, read what you read. Read what you got. Okay. Whatever translation. Well, I have a lot of them. them. I'll read. I'll read Hilari Khan. And the angels will be on its sides, and eight angels will that they bear the throne of your Lord above them. So they're going to carry the throne above them. Eight, eight yeah. angels. That's, oh, eight of them. Yeah. Do you want oh, me to add? Man, you, I'm just going with the verse. I can't add to the verse. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so are we going to the tafsir? You wanted to. I'm asking if the Arsh is not an actual throne, what are they carrying? 
it's not clear. I mean, it's it's as I said, Arsh is metaphorical, so we need to. So they're we carrying to, a metaphorical uh, throne. Okay. We, we we need uh, 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 further clarification at okay. the end of the day. Okay. You know, I mean, we we okay. need we need we need to see it. All right. Okay. Right? Now here's my question for you. Then. Okay. Since you don't, don't, you do believe Allah is above His creation, then above the seven heavens, above Allah is above His creation, but He's not sitting in a chair. Okay. Forget Habibi. sitting on the chair. Okay. All right. He's not. Uh, let's go with it. Let's. He's not sitting on the chair, but you do believe He's above His creation. Okay. Can you read for me? Surah Ali Imran, Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 55, about Asa. If you can read that for me. La, 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 la. Sorry, I had to just do that to loosen my throat because it's getting sore. I'm not young anymore. I used to be able to speak, but now I'm getting old. Anyway, 355. <laughs> yeah, I know you like that, didn't you? Oh, man. Anyway, when you read 355, notice what Allah says to Asa. <clears throat> God says to Jesus in your Quran. This is the place where this video get more interesting. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do it to subscribe. Yeah. If you want, I'll read it. It's up to you. I'm looking. I'm, I'm scrolling down, man. Give me a second. Okay, okay. I mean, I can read it too. You let me know if you. If it's up to you. you. Can read it. I'll read it. You can read Arabic. I'll read in English. I mean, yeah. Go ahead and read it in English. And okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it too. All right, here it says. I'll. Use, I can read anyway. I'll read Yusuf Ali. Behold, God said, O oh Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself. I will raise thee to myself. That's the part I wanted to focus on. And raise thee when to When Allah my... said, oh Jesus, indeed, I will take you and raise you to myself exactly. and purify you. Okay, myself, so, right? So Allah's going to take Jesus goes. to who? Allah's taking Jesus to who? He picked him up. Yeah, but it says to myself. Who's myself? Allah took him to heaven. Did it say heaven or to myself? I'm reading the verse in front of my eyes. Allah, I will take you to myself. This is also in Surah Al-Nisa. So go to Surah Al-Nisa, chapter 4 of the Quran, verse 158. To myself. All right, so now what about 4, 158? Surah Al-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158. Does it say the same thing? You want me to read in English? Chapter 4, verse 158. So that the Nisa, same thing about Isa, they neither killed nor crucified him. But then it says, when you get there, chapter 4, verse 158, <clears throat> Nay, but Allah took him unto himself. Allah's ever mighty wise. So Allah took him to himself. To himself. You said verse 2, 158? No, chapter 4, verse 158. So that the Nisa, chapter 4, verse 158. So I just read it. Nay, Allah took him to himself. Allah took Jesus to himself. And that's what 355 said. Yeah. I will take thee to myself, right? Rather, Allah raised him to himself. And you got it, right? Allah. Okay. Ali, so, Aziz and Hakim. Okay, huh? Now, your Quran just said, and I want you to hear it carefully. Your Quran just said in two places, Allah took Jesus to himself. I will take you to myself, took him to himself. But you just said Allah is above the creation. So now you just have to admit Jesus is with Allah above the creation because he's with Allah. Why is Jesus <laughs> above the creation? Because Allah took him up there. To so a creature him. is above creation. A tr creature is above uh -huh. creation. A creature is above creation. Allahu alam. The Allah is oh. the creator. Jesus was sent. No, that's man. not what I'm asking. If he's a creature, how can a creature be above creation? To say he's above creation means he's separate from creation. That doesn't work. He's in heaven. Didn't say heaven unless Allah is in heaven. Allah does what, as He wills. All right, so Allah will to take a creature above creation to be with Him, making Him His partner. But if you're a creature, you can't be above creation. To be a creature means you're part of creation. If you're above creation, that means you're separate from creation. So either Jesus is separate from creation or He's part of creation. If He's part of creation, He can't be above creation with Allah. Make up your mind. I'm telling you, Jesus is in heaven with yes, Allah. But the Quran didn't say He's in heaven. All right, can you go now to chapter four? Hey, my friend, my friend, do you, do you go, are you a literalist now? I mean, you don't understand, you know. No, I went by what you said. I said, where's Allah? You said above creation. Then Allah could have said, oh, Isa, I'll take you to heaven. Couldn't Allah have said that? But he didn't say, he goes, oh, Isa, I will take you to myself. I just went with what you said. Allah is above the heavens and the earth. And, and Jesus is there. Allah picked up Isa because when they tried to crucify him, somebody else was put in his place because the, Allah was not going to allow him to be, to be, uh, to, that to happen to him. Okay. So okay, you just Allah said, wants that for, for Isa, good, but you just so said, you just said Allah is above the heavens and the earth. So now Jesus is above the heavens and the earth. Excellent. I like that.
Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a clear explanation. We just know that he's picked up. Wow. We don't have. So you your know, crime you're, is a book of confusion. About specifics here, like you're talking about. Oh, what is the location? Give me his latitude and longitude while you're at it. You know, it's like you know, you're, 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 this is still faith at the end of the day. So you're basically it, telling the non-Muslims are hearing your Quran is a book of confusion because no one knows what it means. So instead of guiding me, it's confusing me. And this is what Allah wants me to follow. Something that confuses me. This is semantics. You know, I mean, you're getting too deep. I'm getting too deep because I'm taking the words for what they say. I'm just reading if the words and I'm the taking Bible, it to deep. Okay, so if I did that with the Bible, you're going to come with your whole spiel about, no, this is what it means. But that's going to be what you're saying, and it might not be affirmed by any so-called scholar of the past, if you have any. And there probably is not a consensus within the Christian community about it. So we have what our scholars say. And you're talking about, I mean, you're, you're, you're really getting into semantics to a whole other level to where it's like, okay... How can we? How can we know? At the end of the day, it's Allah so. Okay. All right. Okay. Then let's go to chapter four, verse one seventy-one of the Quran. Chapter four, verse one seventy-one. If you get chapter there. four, one seventy-one. One seventy-one. I one seventy-one because you know the Arabic, and I know you're gonna know how to cor correctly translate this, unlike some translations, right? So four one seventy-one. <clears throat> so well, I told you. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, you can read the Arabic. That's what I'm saying. You can read the Arabic. At least no one can deceive you. With I have a strong basis in Arabic, but I'm stronger yeah. in English, as right. I told you. That's fine. But at least enough where you know when someone's mistranslating, which is good. So if you're in four one seventy-one, you know, not I don't like to delve into all these details. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we can keep our, the, you know, I mean, Islam commands us to do good and forbid evil, to pray. You to want give to talk charity, about that? To you want so you want to talk about moral teaching of the Quran? Is that what you want to talk about now? We can do that. Because you're saying it commands to do good. We can talk about that. You're the one who you're the one who's bringing up the points, and I'm the one who's here to refute. So what are you? What are you? Okay, so now you said Islam. Okay, you okay. said Islam teaches good. Okay, so let's talk about morality of Islam because you follow Quran and Sunnah. Your prophet at one time. I'm not saying now you're Sunni, so I know you don't do it now. But at one time, your prophet accepted Zawj al Muta. Muta, right? Yeah. You're okay with that? Him doing muta? Uh, at the time, it was accepted. So now be honest with me as a man who has respect. You have ghira. You have honor. How would you feel if you lived at that time? So understand what I'm saying. How would you feel if you lived at that time? And one of the Muslims said, I want to marry your sister for three days. And then when I'm done, I'll divorce her and give her money. You honestly would be okay with that? Um, I don't believe that it was done in in, in that context. I, I believe it was it was it was more of you know when they were away from their wives. Well, so it's okay. They, they were, were away. So okay, a Muslim from California is away from his wife, and you're living in Chicago, and he says, "Yahi, I'm gonna marry your sister for three days and give her my money when I'm done because my wife is in California." Are you okay with that? Well, at the end of the day, you have to consider it like this. Do you want to have unlawful sexual relations in the eyes of Allah? Or do you actually want to, you know, if the Prophet said something and, and you know, he's the highest moral authority. So if he uh, permitted something at a certain time under certain circumstances, well, it's not for us to really question that. We're, we, we, we just follow him exactly as he says and uh, we obey him. So you really think a God Almighty who is all powerful would legalize hey i'm giving it to you straight am oh, yeah. i am i beating around the bush no you're honest okay okay all right okay that's fine all right okay then you're saying if it's from allah okay that's fine all right then you can see why non-muslims have a problem with it but okay now that you said well, if it's from allah all right fine okay that's fine let me ask you this then in chapter 4 verse 24 of the quran so i don't have an issue with it but it's okay. not something that we i mean at the time and so a lot of things about uh you know, the Quran is, is uh, it's descriptive. So there are certain things that you guys like to point to. And if I come with, thir you know, numbers 31, yeah, you you're going to go, that's that time. It's Moses had to do this. No, that's man. not my answer. Okay. I wouldn't answer well, that way. I wouldn't answer that way, so, but that's okay. I, that's, I wouldn't answer that. I can answer that very easily. I will. But that's not how we answer numbers 31. But coming to this issue, Surah Nisa chapter 4, verse 24, that you said, okay, Allah permitted it at that time. And that was legal. And I have no problem with it. But now the Shia who say that their hadith still allows muta, it's not been abrogated. Do you then tell them then you guys are committing zinna because you're committing prostitution and trying to excuse it? Would you accuse them of committing zinna? 
Yeah, because yeah. Uh, it, it was said that after, so it was it was allowed for a certain period of time, uh, like when the Muslims, they went on expeditions and they were away from their wives, they were allowed to do it. Um, but, uh, at the, and, and they, they could do it, uh, you know, you know, they, you know, they didn't have any wives at that time. And, you know, it was a different time and stuff like that. Okay. So the Shia doing it you know, today. They needed, to, they needed to, uh, give a mahar, give a gift, uh -huh. give a, a dowry to marry a woman and they could, uh, uh, you know, and enjoy her in, in, in a marital way. And, and you um, consider that marriage after some, and then after some time, um, the humanity. marriage would be dissolved. Okay, but, brother uh, in humanity. Be right honest now we don't we don't permit that, and and the Prophet didn't permit it when you know like you know when the Muslims return home and they're living amongst their community for them to just do it you know with each other's daughters and stuff as as a form of no okay. no marriage of course is meant to be a long term thing. Say it again. And marriage Shia, is meant to be what? Marriage is said, meant to by, be what? I said, I said by and large, it should be a long term is, thing. It, it, okay. It's meant to be a long term thing. Okay. Now there there are certain circumstances that may warrant that but uh, the way we have it now it's not permitted okay let me just repeat what you said marriage is meant to be for long long term even though i may marry someone that i want to stay with things happen we get divorced but my intention wasn't to marry her and divorce her so you agree but you're saying because muhammad under the orders of your god because you believe allah spoke to your prophet when your prophet said you can marry them short term and you can tell a woman Look, I'm just going to marry you for three days and pay you money. That was legal marriage, even though the intention was to be married for a short term. And you really call that marital? You really call that a marriage? Well, you, what you, you got to understand, they were doing Allah's will at the time. Allah's will, okay. So they were out preaching Islam and, you know, assisting in the expansion of Islam. And so they were they did not have their wives with them. So it was permitted for them to temporarily marry the women who were available to them. And right at them, but after a while, this practice was forbidden. And so now when the Shia do it, it's zinna, it is wicked, it's haram, it's immoral. Now if they do that, right? Correct. And they, they, uh, you know, they, they reject our hadith yes, right. and they curse a lot of the, the, the companions. Yep. And so they, they have, become misguided in a lot of ways and i can't speak for them sure no i put them aside but i just want to make sure that we get this for it now when the shia do it it's it's zinna it's sexual immorality it's even adultery we would even call it prostitution but for some reason when your your prophet allowed it to be done because he allowed it then it's no longer prostitution it's no longer adultery it's no longer sexual morality so what changed what changed is the uh, uh, the circumstances. Oh, so when Muhammad decides if the circumstances are right, then it's no longer zinna. Okay. So there are certain circumstances which may warrant that, you know, like in maybe like a wartime or you know something like that, where where it's it's of dire need. But the way we're living now, it's not as if we need to have temporary marriages. Right now, it's right. not something that we should practice. But it's it's. Uh, it's uh you know marriage should be uh more long term as it should anyway, be yeah, yeah as but, the way we okay that. all right now another question then because you said islam teaches good and so on all right in 424 of the quran surat the nisa chapter 4 verse 24 it says unlawful for muslims are married women except except those whom your right hands possess so i can go to the hadith sahih muslim sunan abu dawood but i think you know this is referring to when the Muslims are in war and they attack a place and they take people captive and they find beautiful women that they've taken captive who are married. The Quran says those women, though they're married because they are captives, they are lawful for you to have sex with. You can sell them. Are you OK with that? So now you're talking about Malakat al-Yameen yep. and Maghanim, which are like spoils, I guess. Yes. So you so OK with that? We're talking about, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. All right, welcome back. Hope you've learned from this video. Please do it to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and share to your loved ones. And hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. As you can see in this video, this Muslim guy was claiming to say that Jesus is not the Son of God. And he was saying that Jesus even related to, to God. And some asked him a question. If he will say that Jesus Christ is not related to God or Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. 
and some asked him this question he gave him a verse to read in his quran where it was said that allah is the mother of the book that are of the quran and after reading how can the quran said allah is having a mother and yet not cannot have a son and this guy kept quiet was claiming to say that this is this is an error in the quran so he was trying to tell sam that there is an error written in the quran and this guy kept quiet and started finding another fault that is being written in the bible trying to say that jesus trying to say that jesus is not even powerful in the bible and some said that in the quran and some asked him a question why would then in your quran why would they say that jesus is now the greatest as you can see in this debate this muslim guy did not even know much about the bible nor either the quran he came up with another point trying to say that the quran is more perfect than the bible and some asked him why would the quran be perfect when the quran said you can get married to a lady or a girl and after three days then you can return that same girl to the family of that person so this means you are taking that girl to commit adultery or to become a prostitute at that particular time now why would they why would a man sleep with her after having sex with her after testing her at a particular state of time then that man can still leave her and return her back to her family so does this mean this quran is perfect by returning someone's wife to to return a girl after getting married to have after three days and return it back to your family to their family and this guy kept quiet and Sam brought an approval and said to him, so the Quran is perfect and it said that a, ma that a woman who divorced her, wife, her husband can even sleep with the husband brother of that person. After the husband brother tests her and found that he's good and he can marry her. But if he tests her and she's not good for him, then he can return her. So does all these things sound nice to the hearing of a person that this Quran is perfect? And this guy kept quiet said the Quran is really perfect. And Sam said to him, this Quran is not perfect. That is why you guys are really demonic. As you can see in the end of this video, this guy was not even ready to listen to Sam because I believe these guys are really doomed in what they heard or what they believe in their Quran. Most of them are still in this Islam because of their profit gain they are having. They, are, they only came come here to attack Sam to try to bring a point which is pointless and Sam is always ready to give them the rightful point. Thanks for watching this amazing video. Please do it to like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit up the notification button so that each time we drop our new videos, you'll be notified. Thanks for watching this video.